What's up, guys? This is Eric Psychic coming to you from the test server that just came out today, the 12th of November 2015. And I'm showcasing the new items that are going to be coming out this uh, winter update. So as you can see, there's a lot of new items, and they're really powerful weapons and armor. And most of them are directly linked to the Ferumbros quest line. So let's get started. First, I'll show you the elemental sets here. There's three for knights, one for mages, and one for paladins. So the knight's armor, they're all armor 16. Club, axe, or sword, plus three. And then protection from an element, plus eight, minus eight. So earth, that'd be plus eight earth, fire, minus eight. For fire, that would be plus eight fire, ice, minus eight. And there's one for club, axe, and sword. They're all for play, um, level 200 or higher. So these are going to be the new Earthborn Titan armors and Windborn Colossus armors. You get these armors from collecting 100 silver tokens. And these tokens drop off the new minions of Ferumbras in this quest line. So down here we've got the mage armors. All of the mage armors, armor 13, magic level plus 3, and then plus 8, minus 8. As well as the distance fighting armors, armor 16, distance fighting plus 3, ice plus 8, energy minus 8. And like I said, there is one for each element. Over here, we have these new armors. The Shroud of Despair, Armor 7, Protection of Death, plus 3. This is going to be a new tanky helmet. Uh, previously, Paladins were the only vocation that had a Protection from Death helmet, I believe. So this should equal the playing field. And we've got a Visage of the End Days, which is Armor 10. I believe that's equivalent to the Demon helmet. Just another replacement. Up here, we've got the Death Gaze, a new level 200 shield with Defense 38. That's a pretty good shield right there. And a new Spellbook for Mages, which is Defense 18, Magic Level Plus 4, a contender against the Spellbook of Ancient Arcana and Umbral Master Spellbook. Down here, three new Knight weapons. The Maimer, which is a 51 attack club weapon. It's one-handed, guys, so that's pretty good. So you can see here, I'll put the shield on. Right here, we've got the Plague Bite. I believe this is an axe, but I'm not sure. It's 26 physical attack and 26 earth, so that's actually pretty cool that they're bringing elements back into the game. Hopefully these uh, weapons aren't going to be too expensive, though, because I don't know who's going to drop KKs on an earth weapon. It's really only going to be useful for PvP and a few select spawns. Then over here, this is definitely a sword. The Impaler of the Igniter, 25 physical and 26 fire, so it's only 51 attack. But these are new level 150 weapons, and um, the Crystalline Axe and Shiny Blade are still pretty expensive, so this should hopefully lower the prices of those. And they are all one-handed, as you can see here, and wieldable by all vocations. Over here, we have a new Rift set, kind of equivalent to the other items I just showed you. The Rift Shield Defense 37, another replacement for the Necrotic Shield or Necromancer Shield, whatever it's called. Treader of the Torment, new boots, armor 4. These are going to replace the golden boots, I'm sure, which is pretty interesting. Over here, we've got the Rift Spear, and I've already tested it. It is not a Paladin Spear. It's basically just a Dragon Lance, I guess. Um, but it's usable for all vocations, so I guess that's nice. Then we have a Rift Crossbow. Now, I don't know much about Paladins, but this does seem to be a pretty nice crossbow. Range 5, attack 5, hit um, plus 4%. And then the Rift Bow, range 7, attack 5, hit plus 3%. So those are pretty nice weapons as well. Over here, a new Rod for Druids, which I'll show you guys soon. I'm currently on a Sorcerer, so I can't test it out for you. Then a Ogre Choppa, which is just a basic melee weapon, I guess, dropping off the new Ogres. And an Ogre Clubba, which is basically a Warhammer. So that's pretty neat. Down here, new Rusty Shields and new Rusty Helmets. I'll unrust a couple for you guys right now. I was testing them out earlier. Wow, that was pretty unlucky. And I got a few crown helmets, so it doesn't seem to be too difficult. Right there, I didn't get much. It's pretty much the same chance as the other ones, I'm assuming. But still pretty cool. Then over here, we've got the shaggy ogre bags. I assume these drop off the ogres, and they give a random item every time you use them. Now, I don't know what a rare item would be. You got roasted meat here and raw meat, so it looks like you might be able to cook meat now on a campfire into this roasted meat. I'm not sure. Um, over here, last but not least, the new Ferumbra's items. Now, each of these items has a unique ability, except for the teddy bear that occurs when you use them. Um, it's speculated that all of them have a cooldown, but no one's sure how long the cooldown is yet. I can say myself that I've used the amulet about three or four times now. The keg, I think, two times now. But the staff and boots seem to have a really long cooldown. 
So I'll show you guys in different clips what these items do. And the teddy bear, of course. Just a cool little teddy bear. So that's about it, guys. Um, somebody just happened to walk by. Uh, next up, I'll show you guys Kralos and the new arena. Alright, guys. So first I'm going to show you Kralos because the arena isn't working right now. Kralos is basically one giant desert. The island is very big. I would compare it to probably Ankerman, the entire desert there. They're probably equal in size. I spent most of the test server just mapping out Kralos and killing some of the ogres. What I can say about the ogres is they're kind of slow. They don't really hit too hard. And they're about 1,200 experience each, so I guess they're comparable to dragons. I assume the spawn, since it's so wide open and you can't really group up many of the ogres at once, I assume this is probably going to be a paladin or a knight spawn. And definitely for maybe level 60s, maybe 80, but I haven't hunted a paladin that low in a while or a knight, so I'm not sure if this would be great experience. There is a dragon spawn to the south in Kralos, as you can see here. There are some eggs on the ground. I believe people were breaking those open to spawn hatchlings, but I'm not too sure. There's like a single dragon lord here and a few dragons that spawn, but there's not really much to Kralos. It's pretty deserted. In the middle, you can find a little village, and that as well is deserted, and there's a couple quest NPCs around. Now, I didn't start any of the quests on Kralos because I don't like to do any of those things until the main game. I don't really like to explore all the quests on the test server. But Kralos is pretty empty, and hopefully there's more to it if you follow the quest lines. I did go up the southern mountain, which is the only place on the island you can really go up. Alright, I know this is what you guys have actually been waiting for. The new Ferumbra's quest line. This is a very challenging quest line, but it's going to give a ton of great new rewards like what I showed previously in this video. I do have to say though, you need a team to do this quest. You cannot do it alone. If you try to run through here by yourself, this is what's going to happen. <clears throat> oh, I just got headshot. Wow. I told you. What headshot are you? A hell flare for a 1072 plus 900. Jesus. Really? Yeah. Straight headshot. You. Literally. Full HP. So now that you've seen how tough these monsters are, I can't say I didn't warn you. It appears these monsters don't walk over energy though, so you do at least have one line of defense. I didn't get to see what elements they were weak to because there was so much going on, but for the most part, avalanches and SDs seem to do the trick. I should probably mention that to get in here, you need to head to the northeast corner of Durashia, and then you hand in 30 demonic essence to the NPC to get through the portal. Once inside, you're supposed to collect these four sacrifice items and do some other stuff to get through another portal to the inner tunnels, where I believe the first boss fight most likely is, but like I said, I'll wait until the winter update goes live before I do this quest. Alright guys, so I messed up and when I was playing around with the items I ended up using them all. It seems like they have really long cooldowns and their effects can only be used maybe once per day for some of them, once per hour on others. So I'll just tell you real quick what they do. The Boots of Homecoming, if you use them, they'll teleport you to Ferumbra's Citadel right outside the electric fields, kind of um, four or five squares away. The Teddy Bear doesn't do anything. The Scroll of Ascension turns you into a demon. The Mana Keg creates 10 great mana potions. The wand is equivalent to a wand of defiance for sorcerers of level 65 or higher. I believe it gives plus one magic level of two, but there's a bug not showing the stats. And the amulet seems to have a random effect. It's healed me for a thousand health before, and other times it just says something has changed, but it doesn't tell you exactly what. So I hope you guys like this video. If you can't tell right now, I'm sitting in the arena in thighs, but it doesn't seem to work for some reason. If you guys like this video and want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you all later.